Welcome to episode 48, guys. 6 and 60 is coming to you live, the tape, hours before you possibly downloaded it or are listening to it. It is a 4.57. I have to be out the door at 5.30. Um, not true. 6.30 is what I meant. I have to be out the door at 6.30, not a moment later. And I'm going to completely do a show solo. No Sean, no Tahir, no Gerard. Uh, and most of you aren't going to listen. Because it's just me, and I've learned how fucking hateable I am this week, super early into 2016. It's the future. It's the future. It's the 5th of January, and uh, harsh realities coming left, right, and sideways. Uh, I'm actually having a pretty good year so far. I mean, it's only five days, and I've already found reasons to bitch. What is it about my personality that's so uh, polarizing? You love me, you hate me, but you have to have a feeling. I would really love some people to not have an opinion. I would love some people to to just kind of be tweeners. It's it's one of these crazy things where even when I'm surrounded by love, I'm 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 racked with uh with guilt and self doubt, and and I know it's normal. I I read books. I know how to read. I read books about it all the time. How how we all are like this. We're all these fucking flawed beings who are just spinning on this rock in space and we're not petrified of it but we probably should be we're real close to a sun that just melts us it's cold suddenly in new york it's been it's been notoriously nice and uh today i yesterday i'm driving home from rehearsal cm performing arts center the noel s ruiz theater uh i'm driving home and it's it's like flurrying it's freezing out and uh, i wake up to facebook 4 30 this morning i'm up to to get ready for work so 4.30 in the morning, I wake up, and the first thing I do in bed while I'm still all toasty is I'll just check Facebook and see who's saying what from the night before. And there's a lot of people that are like, fuck you for not wanting cold weather. I don't think it makes me a bad guy to not want cold weather. I, I prefer nice weather. I also prefer living in New York. So there's a couple months a year where I just piss and moan about weather when it's nice. and I don't, Or not nice, rather. And I don't even think it's it's pissing and moaning. I think it's just acknowledging. I'm acknowledging the fact that outside is stupid. My face hurts. What's that That silly meme? Why do I live in a place where my face hurts when I go outside? My face hurts. Wind hits me. I'm, I'm, I feel like I've been sick for a year and a half. Probably dying or something awful is happening to me. I feel congested, congested all the time. And my broken nose doesn't help that. But it, it certainly can't hurt it this much. Um, exciting time for me. I'm two weeks away from In the Heights opening up. Uh, the guy who wrote Hamilton, the hottest ticket on Broadway right now, uh, Lynn Manuel, he, uh, he wrote in the Heights. It was his first big show. It was his first show really that broke him into the business. And, uh, it's amazing. Both of them, it, Hamilton, from what I've heard, I've never, I haven't been able to see it. Uh, although I desperately want to see it. Um, but in the Heights, it's really proven to be this really amazing thing. Amazing cast. Uh, the girls are gorgeous. The dudes are handsome as fuck, and uh, we're and we're crushing it. Is the is the honest honest fact? Is we are whooping this show's ass. If you're in the area, CM Performing Arts Center, the Noel S. Reeves Theater, uh, CMPAC dot com. It's in Oakdale, in New York, which is uh, specifically Long Island, New York. I don't know. I'm out of it. I'm out of it because I'm like I was trying to get a co-host for this, and now I have three. But um, again, Gerard uh, had a Star Wars date, episode seven. He finally saw Sunday the week before. He had his mother's birthday, and uh, you know I could have I could have gotten Ty to uh to come here and then possibly get stuck in rush hour, but that didn't seem fair. Uh, the schedules the schedules are kind of goofy. Uh, so hopefully this weekend we'll have a nice recording session back to normal. But until then, you guys are gonna get an hour of me. Um, I, let's let's go ahead and take a listen to uh, to one of my favorite songs from Hamilton the musical. It'll whet your appetite for uh, for In the Heights, which next week I'll play songs from. I promise. Maybe at the end of this one I'll even play it. But this is uh, the, the about the titular character Alexander Hamilton one of our founding fathers one of the only founding fathers whose story is seldom told although time this this month um time magazine has a great great story about him his tragic ending it's amazing hey, if you haven't heard about the musical you're either not inclined to know pop culture shit um or you're aggressively avoiding broadway news which either one i respect i'm cool with either living under a rock seems fun 
it seems uh seems like a blast what i'm gonna do guys here's a taste of that and uh and when i come back uh we're gonna talk some news we haven't done that in a while and uh i'm gonna present to you the most boring beginning of 2016 uh podcast of all time no guests no uh no stories unless they pop into my mind just news articles so uh here's some music and we'll be right back. How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore and a Scotsman Dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean By providence impoverished and squalor Grow up to be a hero and a scholar the ten dollar founding father without a father got a lot farther by working a lot harder by being a lot smarter by being a self-starter by 14. they placed him in charge of a trading charter and every day while slaves were being slaughtered and carted away across the waves he struggled and kept his guard up inside he was longing for something to be a part of the brother was ready to beg steal borrow or barter then a hurricane came and devastation reigned our man saw his future drip dripping down the train put a pencil to his temple connected it to his brain and he wrote his first refrain a testament to his pain well the word got around they said this kid is insane man took up a collection just to send him to the mainland get your education don't forget from whence you came and the world's gonna know your name it's your name man alexander hamilton my name is Alexander Hamilton And there's a million things I haven't done But just you wait, just you wait When he was ten, his father split full of it Debt ridden two years later See Alex and his mother bedridden half dead Sitting in their own sick, the scent thick And Alex got better, but his mother went quick Moving with a cousin, the cousin committed suicide Left him with nothing but ruined brides Up and new inside a boy saying Alex, you gotta fend for yourself He started retreating and reading Every tree that's on the shelf but There would've been nothing left to do For someone less astute He would've been dead and destitute Without a cent or restitution Started working, working for his late mother's landlord Trading sugar cane and rum And all the things he can't afford to send him on want to do that show now like next why why am i not on broadway it's probably because i'm not i'm not good enough because people on broadway are fucking insane but i'm damn good i'm damn good especially uh this production coming up in the heights uh the 16th we open up i believe i'll put it on the i'll put it on the little poster art 
But uh, lately, I've been using my Xbox One a lot, given at weird hours. Uh, a couple friends uh, polarizing still. Uh, me and Tahir, one of the new co-hosts, we play all the uh, we play all the time. Our uh, his good friend Tiffany. Uh, I'm kind of in hot water with her, as I am with with all girls. And there's something like just punchable about my face is what I think it is. But people love John's face, and it's similar. So maybe it's the chubbiness of our face. Makes it uh, punchable. I'm just real quick to get a lot of like aggro, like people get their aggravations out uh, on me, and I don't know why. I feel like I, I feel like I try real hard to be pleasant. I, I say nice things. I do nice things. I'm thoughtful. So about me, I, it's the same thing that's going on with with Sean, the you know the girl who's mad at me about the Sean Robe story. Total fucking jerk to me. Like trying to give me the silent treatment. And uh, there was a time, even last year, there was a time where I'd have uh, felt bad or felt something other than this weird desire I have to make her cry. Uh, super mean to her at work when she, she kind of interrupted me, uh, a lead, Tiffany, Ty here. She interrupted us to give Ty a calendar. Um, wouldn't look at anyone but Ty here. And don't get me wrong, he's a gorgeous boy. He has dimples that are just killers. Um, but she was a super big dick. So when she left, I was like, Sean says hi. Then I made fun of her fucking new haircut because she like dyed it red or something. And uh, I made fun of her. I made fun of her because I'm, I'm, you know, mean beats the fuck out of nothing. I'm not going to pretend someone doesn't exist. I'm not going to let someone like win. And some people would argue that I lost. I lost by by being rude. But you know what? I'd rather fucking lose loudly than win subtle. Um, I don't know if that even makes sense. Empire lost big and fucking the goddamn dark side is still coming back. Now it's the new order. It's respectable. But my Xbox began some use playing the Star Wars game, playing a little bit of Call of Duty, still playing wrestling, uh, playing all those free games that come with Xbox Gold. Um, I don't really understand the Xbox Live thing. Is there a version that doesn't come with the free games that's cheaper? Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Someone explain it to me. I'm really dumb. Like, I never read anything. I'm just like, well, I'll just do this because I got that as a gift. So they gave me the, the Xbox Gold membership with it. And it kind of went from there. But, uh, yeah, this is me inanely rambling for a couple of minutes at a time. Oh, God, this is going to be the worst 60 minutes of your life. I, I just feel like a terrible rock and roll radio DJ. Next on the hits, two for Tuesday. We're going to listen to back to back Lenny Kravitz. Just something, just something ridiculous. So a gamer in Siberia says he lost his job and his wife after playing Fallout 4 for three weeks straight. How do you lose your wife for three weeks of being a douche? That seems like not a strong relationship. Uh, he said that during these uh, three weeks, he skipped work, ignored his friends and barely slept or ate. Um, I imagine this guy's probably a fluffy dude. I don't feel like a lot of really handsome guys have these particular addictions. Like, I, I I, could imagine myself being like, oh, no, I have to play 19 hours of Fallout today. Um, I feel like my ass would get tired. I feel like I've broken, broken the curse by just I would be so uncomfortable playing for that long. Um, but there's no way this guy's fit. He's not a Tahir, Sean, or Gerard. He, he's more inclined to be Charlie-sized. And uh, by that, I mean a little gross, uh, not as beautiful. No one's going to have the beautiful face I have to justify this terrible body. Um, now, though, <laughs> this guy is suing Bethesda, the company that makes Fallout 4, for making their game so addictive and ruining his life. He's demanding $7,020 in compensation for emotional stress. Seven grand for a wife and his job. This guy is a fucking winner and kind of a genius. Uh, it's it's suing someone for making a game too good. It's me playing Grand Theft Auto. It's like, this game is so fucking great. I don't want to do anything else. Let me sue Rockstar. It's fucking gobbledygook. Uh, to be fair, this occurred in Siberia. I got this article off of uh, Death and Taxes. Home of the coldest town on Earth, where the average annual temperature is 23 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 13 in January. If uh, my ass was chapped every day like that, I'd probably want to stay inside playing those video games. I'm going to retract my previous uh, my previous statement. If his lawsuit bears fruit, it'll set an incredible precedent, namely that manufacturers can be held legally responsible for people overusing or abusing their product. Uh, if that's the case, I'd like to sue the makers of everything that's wasted my time. Uh, pops, movies, masturbation. Uh, I should sue all of them because I've given up so much time. 
I'm going to take a sip of water for the working man. That's right. Dead silence. Gerard would be so proud. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence, my girl, J-Law. Man, did I did I hate her for a long time? There was something there was something about her that was just kind of hateable. Um, I don't know what it was because she doesn't really changed. I think it's just because everyone was hip to her being cool and and fucking sexy and awesome, like way before I did. It wasn't kind of until I don't even know if I could place it. There was at some point where I just became like a huge Jennifer Lawrence fan. Uh, and this this isn't hurting. This isn't hurting. So she stopped by Bravo's Watch What Happens Live Monday to discuss her love of, van, uh, of Vanderpump rules. I don't even know what that is. And making off camera make. Uh, and uh, wow, I can't even read. Why am I trying to do this solo? This might only be 30 minutes. I don't know if I can do the whole 60. Three and 30. Does that sound good? Um, she was talking about her uh, making out off camera with Liam Hemsworth because they grew up together. It was a very cute little segment. But apparently the best part per death and taxes was when a caller mentioned Justin Bieber's crush on her. During an appearance on the British radio show, Bieber gushed that Lawrence was so sexy. She's unbelievable. So cute. I use my Bobby bottle service for every douchebag, Bieber included. Uh, they went on to ask uh, Lawrence what she uh, what she thought about it. If the crush was requited and she says, and I quote, I'm going to say a hard no, no pause. She didn't think about it. She just pretty much said, "Ugh," and Ugh is the proper response. That guy fucking is terrible. I, I, I know he did like the comedy central thing and that was supposed to get him over. It didn't. He, he stinks. Justin Bieber looks like everyone I've ever hated. There's something about his face that uh, he he has. Now that I think of it, he has the fucking punchable face. Fuck that guy. What an asshole. Trying to smash Jennifer Lawrence. Our Jennifer Lawrence, the sweetheart that just sweets all the hearts. I guess. Until I change my mind and hate her again. Because there's something wrong with my brain. Arthur Charles Roy... I don't know if you're laughing. You, I hope you turned it off. This is this is going nowhere fast. Arthur Charles Roy threatened to shoot and kill a minor over sharing a spoiler from Star Wars: The Force Awakens. The 18-year-old suspect was in his Helena, Montana home last Thursday when he was chatting online with Facebook friends. One of his friends, or some kid that wound up in the comments thread, because frankly the Facebook algorithm is insane. Uh, managed to reveal one of J.J.'s storylines from the movie, which then prompted Roy to share a photo of himself holding a Colt 1911 with a hair trigger, he quoted, and added that he would go to a school and shoot him dead. This is according to CBS News. Uh, after receiving the threat, the teen alerted the school, uh, a school resource officer, and authorities subsequently took action. The school, which the kids attended, Went on to lockdown Friday morning, and that afternoon, police arrested Roy and charged him with fel a felony assault with a weapon, which is kind of extreme. Uh, a judge set bail at ten thousand dollars during Roy's appearance in Lewis and Clark County Justice Court on that afternoon. Roy's mother asked the court why her son was being arrested when she claims it was only a BB gun used in the photo, which is somewhat besides the point, considering we still have more important questions that need answering. Like, why did Poe Demarion just decide to up and leave the desert planet after his stolen TIE fighter crashed, even though the entire point of going back to planet was to find BB-8? Did he look for him at all? I would like to know. That's important to me. This little fuckhead holding a, a gun, fake or otherwise, and saying he's going to kill someone. Fuck him. Enjoy jail time, shithead. Another real winner. Like, that's no offense to those states, but I feel like those stories are real common. My stories, like New York stories, are all like gang violence, cool shit. Not holding a BB gun on Facebook and saying, I'm going to kill you because fucking Chewbacca got shaved in the new movie. Really happened. That's not that. I'm not even going to spoiler alert it. He looks great. He looks great naked, uh, as Gerard would would point out. Much bigger dick than you even anticipated from a Wookiee. It's just insane. Let's talk about an Oregon man who was arrested for robbing a bank and then went on a Christmas shopping spree after I sipped this water because my throat hurts. <sighs> Delicious. Uh, the Oregonian reports that 28, 28, 20, wait, wait. That's what I just said. I said 20, wait, wait. 
28-year-old Brett Jalipsy Comstock entered a Selco Community Credit Union in Bend. Wow. All of that was just sex pun to comes. Walking, uh, walked back out, walked in again later and requested to open an account. What Gillespie Comstock really wanted was to rob the place, which he kind of did after handing the teller uh, a note saying, give me $5,000, you son of a bitch. The teller pretty much stiffed the dude and only wound up giving him $1,400, probably all those in that terrible draw. This guy that went Christmas shopping, his uh, his list was a little unconventional, but whatever, it counts. So he had a 40-minute reign of terror. Gillespie Comstock bought a, cra- uh, a can, rather, I almost said crate, a can of spray paint from an auto parts store. Um, I guess a dog, some weed swag from a marijuana dispensary, including a beanie and hoodie, and a shitty sandwich from Jimmy John's that probably was more lettuce than anything else. The only festive item that he bought on his list was a Christmas tree, which he not only bought with stolen money, but used in an attempt to hide his face from authorities. Shockingly, Ben police are actually smarter than Scooby-Doo villains, so they were able to nab the thief who had $700 in his possession and 475 hidden behind the Napa he bought his spray paint from instead of, I don't know, depositing it? Maybe another robber he was worried about? I'm just saying, if you walk in and out of a credit union, you should have opened that account. A nice little savings account to prep for next year's Christmas. I'm, I'm just saying, 20 bucks, 20 every every paycheck. He probably gets paid weekly, if he, if he even bi-weekly. $40 a month, 12 months, you know, it's five, a couple bucks. Got a couple bucks. You guys just saw me fail to do quick math. Fuck you, I'm exhausted. I'm going to go here and go to the theater and, and make a show. Hopefully some of you jerks will... Uh, We'll see. Some of you are going, which is weird. It's weird to get, like, private Facebook messages. And they're like, oh, we're coming. I'm like, oh, why? Because I love you guys. I just don't know who you are. I don't know. I Like, sometimes I don't think you exist. Do you you think just what's the likelihood that people download this and it just goes to, like, their queue and I still get the the points? Like, it still shows up on mine. Like, so-and-so, listen to your show. And I'm like, yeah. But it turns out they didn't. Because I know you guys hung up, turned off, whatever. I, I I might have gone insane. That's what this might be proving. I'm talking to myself in a in a little studio I built with my own dumb hands, surrounded by child like children's toys. This is this is absurd. Another sip of water for me. You guys want to join? But this is what happens, man. You you live a, a wicked life. You end up uh, alone sometimes in a room like a jackass. Looking at a half-naked Ron Burgundy talking action figure. Why do I own that? Why is that a thing I own? I don't know. I don't, I can't even, I can't even begin to, to, to guess why I ever bought that thing. Uh, (laughs) Let's see here. Uh, This story is depressing. It's about a woman comedian who got like beat up. It's, it's like super sad. It's important to know. But I don't want to get into it because I'm probably only going to do a few more minutes and then uh, call it a day because this beats nothing. Barely. Just barely. According to the true crime new program Crime Watch Daily. Wow. That's a thing. According to the tr- it's called true crime new pro. Oh, it's called Crime Watch Daily. It's a new true crime program, but it's just called. true. I can't again. I can't read. Why do people trust me? According to Crime Watch Daily, actor Mark Salling, best known as Puck from Glee, was arrested for having child pornography in his home. The LAPD Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force Unit reportedly served the actor with a warrant at his Sunland, California home on Tuesday morning. Sources told TMZ that an ex-girlfriend tipped off the authorities leading to an investigation but so before serving the warrant. The gossip site also claimed that hundreds of images were found on his computer. The 33-year-old actor was subsequently arrested for possession of child porn. It's not the first time he's dealt with legal troubles for sex offenses. Back in 2013, he was named in a sexual battery suit by a woman who allegedly uh, was forced to have sex with him without a condom. A charge that Sailing denied. The suit was settled for more than $2.7 million. That's fucked. That's fucked and creepy. Why? 
you got to be on TV with a terrible haircut and and you know, I know Glee Fever was like a real quick burnout. Um God, that was one of those weird fads. And I'm like, this is this show's popular. And I tried to watch it. I tried to stay fucking hip with the kids. And it was just it was it wasn't good. It wasn't good. And and it wasn't even like so bad. It was entertaining. I, I know some people, my mother liked it. Um some of my friends liked it. Uh better than any TV show I've been on so far. <laughs> but it was just kind of filled with a lot of way over the top nonsense but you know that's what kids like but i feel like it came and went how long did glee i'm gonna google it i'm gonna google it because uh you know what the fuck why not you guys can bear with me you're definitely googling it like way faster than me so far i saw season six wow this fucking mark sailing he's all over like the news posts because duh glee forever it got an 8.2 out of 10 from TV.com, 6.7 from uh, IMDb. That's really not that bad. Why aren't you telling me how many fucking seasons, sir? What's wrong with you? Oh, I forgot that Corey Monteth died. This cast is going to have like all sorts of creeps. Six seasons, six years. I hope. I could have read that wrong. I assume six or seven years. Which is way longer than I thought. I thought it was like two two years. So I guess I'm a fucking idiot. Remember when they went to the city? They all wore those terrible tourist New York shirts. And then everyone started wearing them. Because they were like, they did it on Glee. That was terrible. Living on Long Island, if you buy a tourist shirt and then wear it at anything but an ironic party, you need to punch yourself in the dick. Uh, a man, oh, This is sad, too. I'm not going to read that. A guy died. Um like two minutes into 2016, saving a woman from a, a stranger from a malfunctioning elevator that was about to plummet. It was like that scene in Resident Evil where the girl almost gets decapitated, but then totally gets decapitated. Only it was real, so therefore sad. That's terrible. There's the fucking white ISIS guys who fucking took over that campus, which is crazy. Um, This is nuts. I, I don't even want to get into it, but it's not covered on the news. I have to cover it here on this podcast. That's fucking weird and sad. Um, hear that? That's my gross allergies and my I'm dying. I just need vitamin C and, and a nap. And I can have neither because I'm trying to quasi-entertain you. And I'm not doing a good job. I'm just reading to you. I should have just grabbed a book. Just read you uh, Here Comes Daredevil Volume Fucking 4. Uh, let's see here. I, I'm literally just reading on the air. Why are you people still listening? It doesn't make sense. So on Saturday, armed protesters took to the streets of Burns, Oregon, uh, to protest what they considered the unfair treatment of Dwight Hammond and Stephen Hammond, father and son ranchers who were convicted of arson for burning public land in 2001 and 2006. Afterwards, some of the protesters who were armed forcibly entered the National Wildlife Refuge in Burns and are now occupying the building. White ISIS! Terrorism is defined as the use of violence and intimidation to pursue uh, in the pursuit of political aims. So they are fucking terrorists. This is an armed force occupying a federal bin, uh, building threatening violence. So, uh, should someone attempt to stop them and they plan... Um, yeah, they threaten violence... Assuming someone who tries to stop them and they plan on staying there until they get what they want. That's terrorism not being covered. They claim there's no children, um, which might be true, but apparently there's 150 people there uh, was the original rumor. Turns out there's about 15 uh, per updates at John LGC. Uh, I got nothing. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Uh, allegedly, Camille Cosby, wife of alleged serial rapist and super big monster, Bill Cosby is scheduled to testify Wednesday in uh, the defamation case against her husband after a judge struck down her request to halt her impending de uh, de deposition. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm out of it, guys. The deposition. Allegedly, she thinks that he's innocent but should burn in hell for being a dirty cheater. This is alleged. So take it with a big grain of salt. 
Oh, this is fucked up, too. A 15-year-old girl in Kent County, Michigan, is about to get hit with felony child porn charges for selling explicit images of herself. According to a search warrant affidavit obtained by the smoking gun, the 15-year-old suspect whose name has not been released because she's a juvenile, um, they, however, did leave her email address unredacted, but whatever, earned over $1,000 in about a year, which is not a lot, by selling dirty photos and videos of herself to creeps online. She met them via the messaging app Kick, which as far as I can tell is like the BlackBerry Messenger for pedophiles. Uh... Her, she said she would post on her account that she was selling stuff. Men would then contact her and ask what she was selling. She would tell them that she would send them nude pictures or videos for a price. She then continued to say that there was no set price for each media file. She admitted that she would receive more money for videos and less money for pictures. She also said that she would masturbate in some of the videos she made of herself. She said that none of the pictures or videos showed her face and she would not be able to be identified by the media. She said that the men knew she was underage, but couldn't un elaborate on how. Her kick handle, in case you were wondering, I'm, uh, it's, I'm not saying so you contact her. I'm saying because it's terrible. It was your favorite bun bun, which is appropriately dirty for a 15-year-old. Just throwing that out there. Uh, the men, many of whom are named in the affidavit, would deposit money into her PayPal account, sometimes with appreciative mem uh, messages like for my sexy chocolate skinned honey. Then she would send the images of them via Gmail. Uh, she apparently had some on Tumblr as well. All in all, it sounds like she was running a pretty good game, although she definitely could have charged more. Her transactions went as high as $165, but as low as 10 bucks. Um, I mean, porn's free, so I feel like $10 on the internet is all the money. Unfortunately, for Little Miss Redacted, no sexual, uh, sexually precocious teen has ever done anything but Anything naughty they didn't want to brag about and brag she did to several family members. She told her mother, horrified that adult men were taking advantage of her child, she called the police for help. Fast forward to a few months later, and now they're getting ready to charge that same child with disseminating child pornography, which is a felony. Does it seem fair that a minor, albeit one with an apparent large amount of agents, agency and business acumen should be branded as a sex offender for essentially being the victim of a sex crime herself after all child porn laws were designed to protect children from adults not themselves it'll be interesting to see what kind of absurd logic uh logic damn it logic the juvenile court prosecutor uses should the state decide to go forward with these charges uh pretty crazy and to wrap up yeah we're just gonna do a half episode guys i'm i'm fucking beat to hell um i'm sorry that this exists i'll make it up to you Somehow, I don't know how, but I'll do it. I'm surrounded by my Christmas presents. I have lots of good ones. I'm much happier than you are about this. <laughs> but uh, it's true. I'm like looking at all my shit and I'm like gleeful. Um, but last story, a man in Germany died tragically after trying to blow up a condom machine to steal condoms and money on Christmas Day. That's right. That sentence happened. And it's real. Uh, three burglars built a homemade bomb hoping to break open a condom machine in a quiet neighborhood near Shopogan, hoping to steal all the money and condoms inside. One guy placed the bomb in the machine. The others hid behind a car. Unfortunately, it blew up almost instantly and steel debris hit him in the fucking head. The other two thieves rushed their 29-year-old friend to the hospital where they said he fell down some stairs. Gentlemen. My wonderful bomb-making criminal asshole friends. That's a terrible excuse. After their friend died, they opened up to police about their condom heist, and they were both arrested. Wow. Police confirmed that the condoms and money were totally safe. So really, the most important thing is there is you can still fucking not get AIDS while fucking a rando. Who buys condoms from a vending machine? Is that popular in Germany? That's, that's a thing? You can't afford the three pack. It's like four dollars for a three pack. Are you just buying a lot? Do you want to try one of each? How much money could have been in there? A guy is dead for trying to steal like thirty-five bucks. I, that's fucked up. A little funny, like inappropriately funny. Yes, funny. Yes. Uh, one less dum dum, guys. For myself, six and sixty dot net has much better episodes. The CM Theater at the 
said the name wrong. The new L.S. Reese Theater at CM Performing Arts Center has much better shows than this one is currently. Uh, I'm going to be in it, in the Heights. Buy your tickets if you're local now, cmpac.com, 6and60.net for all of our links, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We are on Stitcher, Internet Radio, and iTunes, and even YouTube. Uh, feel free to send me a comment letting, you, letting me know how terrible this was. It seems bad. It seems bad. Let me play you a song from In the Heights to make it up to you. That sound good? Uh, let's play. Let's play the main song, In the Heights. Take it away, you snobby. I'll see you guys next week, hopefully with someone in the fucking studio. To das, motherfuckers. I'm out. Lights up on Washington Heights. Up at the break of day, I wake up. And I got this little punk I gotta chase away. Pop the grade at the crack of dawn. Sing while I wipe down the awning. Hey, y'all, good morning. Ice cold feet agua. Parcha, china, cherry, strawberry. And just for today, I got mame. Oye, Piraguero, ¿cómo está? Como siempre, señor Usnavi. I am Usnavi, and you probably never heard my name. Reports of my fame are greatly exaggerated, exacerbated by the fact that my syntax is highly complicated. Cause I immigrated from the single greatest place in the Caribbean, Dominican Republic. I love it, Jesus, I'm jealous of it, and beyond that, ever since my folks passed on, I haven't gone back. God damn, I gotta get on there. Oh. The milk is gone bad, hold it just a second Why is everything in this fridge warm and tepid? I better step it up and fight the heat Cause I'm not making any profit if the coffee isn't light and sweet <gasps> Abuela, my fridge broke, I got cafe but no con leche Try my mother's own recipe, one can of condensed milk Nice Ay, paciencia y fe that was Abuela, she's not really my Abuela But she practically raised me, this corner is her escuela now You probably thinking, I'm up Shit's Creek I've never been north of 96th Street Well, you must take the A train Even farther than Harlem to northern Manhattan and maintain Get off at 181st and take the escalator I hope you're writing this down, I'm gonna test you later I'm getting tested, times are tough on this bodega Two months ago somebody bought Ortegas Our neighbors started packing up and up and ever since the rents went up it's gotten mad expensive but we live with just enough in the heights i flip the lights and start my day in the heights i flip the lights and start my day in the heights i flip the lights and They run the cab company, they struggle in the body Or see their daughter Nina's off at college Tuition is mad steep, so they can't sleep Everything they get is mad cheap Good morning, Pan caliente, cafe con leche Put $20 on today's lottery One ticket, that's it Hey, man's got a dream Don't mind him, he's all excited Cause he will win at 3 a.m. last night Don't look at me one's been cooking all week. Snobby, come over for dinner. There's plenty to eat. So the Yesenia walks in their room. Uh -huh. She smells sex and she perfume. Uh -oh. It smells like one of those trees that you hang from the rear view. <laughs> no. It's true. She screams, who's in there with you, Julio? Grabs a bat and kicks in the door. She's in bed with Jose from the liquor store. No, no me diga. diga. Daniel and Carla from the salon. Thanks, Usnavi. Sonny, you're late. Relax. You know you love me. Me and my cousin running. Just another dime a dozen. Mom and pop stop and shop. You know my God is not in too darn hot. Like my man Cole Porter said. People come through for a few cold waters and a lottery ticket. Just a part of the routine. Everybody's got a job. Everybody's got a dream. They gossip as I sit my coffee is smirked the first stop is people hop to work but if I like one dollar two dollars one fifty one sixty nine I got it you want a box of condoms what kind that's two quarters two quarter waters the New York Times you need a bag for that the taxes at it once you get some practice at it you do rap mathematics automatically send them maxi pads but the best for taxi cabs practically everybody's stressed yes but they press through the mess bounce checks and wonder what's next in the heights I find my
got no skills. Benny, yo, let me get a Milky Way. Yeah, let me also get a Daily News and a Post. And the most important, my boss is second coffee, one cream, five sugars. I'm the number one earner, yeah. the fastest learner. Yeah. My boss can't keep me on the damn back burner. Yes, he can. I'm making moves, I'm making deals, but guess what? What? You still ain't got no skills. Party Tell Vanessa show up yet. Shut up. Hey, little homie, don't get so upset. Me. Tell Vanessa how you feel. Buy the girl a meal on the real or you ain't got Yes, ask her out right now. I'll see you later. We can look at that lease. Do something, make you move. Don't freeze. Hey. You owe me a bottle of cold champagne. Are you moving? Just a little credit check, and I'm on that downtown train. Well, your coffee's on the house. Okay. Now we ask her out. Wait. I'll see you later. So. Ooh, smooth operator. Oh, damn, there she goes. Yo, bro, take five. Take a walk outside. You look exhausted. Lost. Don't let life slide. The whole hood is struggling. Yeah, times are tight. And she's stuck to this corner like a street light. I'm a street light choking on the heat. The world spins around while I'm frozen to my seat. The people that I know all keep on rolling down the street. But every day is different, so I'm switching up the beat. Cause my parents came with nothing. They got a little more to show. We're poor, but yo, at least we got the store. And it's all about the love. 